Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. My name is of course Constantine and today we are finally taking flight here. We are finally checking out Microsoft's Flight Simulator and this one's gonna be a beauty of a game. I mean I've been really excited about this game ever since I heard about it. I really wanted to just simply jump on one of these planes and explore the world as much as possible. Especially with what's going on right now in the world. Uh, traveling is not really an option anymore for most of us. So of course, I really hope that you guys are ready for this. I hope that you guys are ready to watch me learn how to freaking fly these planes because I'm pretty sure this is not gonna be easy at all. As flying these planes is probably gonna be a little bit more realistic than what we are used to when playing games. Now before we jump straight into this one, I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank Microsoft for sending in a copy of the game to feature on the channel and uh, give it our impressions here. Let's see what this is all about. Because again, really, really curious about this one. Alright, let's boot this one up and see what it's all about. Now, do keep in mind that I am playing this one on the PC, as I do have quite a powerful computer here. And uh, I do have the settings set all the way up to max, just so that we can see how this game looks, because I have a feeling this one's gonna be absolutely gorgeous. Now, do keep in mind this game is also available on the Xbox as well, just in case you don't really have a powerful computer. And uh, I'm pretty sure it's gonna work just wonderfully. Alright, so now that we are on the game here, I think what we are gonna do is... Uh, Go straight into the flight mode here. As you can see, there are eight chapters here that we can do in order to learn how to fly a plane. And um, yeah, I do believe I am going to go through all of these in this episode and try to make them as short as possible just so that this video is not going to take too long. And uh, once we're done with that, we are going to go exploring a little bit more. I think if I go on the world map right here, I think you can actually set waypoints. Let's say, for example, I want to go from Sofia set as departure to go to Gibraltar in Spain set as arrival I mean look at this we could actually just do this flight right now if you want to but uh, since uh, we haven't really played this game at all I just managed to install it because this game is going to be quite big I think it took uh, about 100 gigabytes or something like that which is quite a lot uh, so now that we got that done let me just go into the training here and uh, start this off let's see how difficult it is to fly the plane Right, there we go. Wow, look at this place. Are you kidding me right now? I love this. Oh Welcome god. To flight training. I'm your instructor, Captain Molina, but you can just call me Jess. Oh. This session will get started with some basic controls. Sound good? Alright. First things first, let's get familiar with your surroundings. Yeah, that's actually what I'm doing right now because I'm really curious to see what's happening. A quick reference guide of basic controls. You can see we have great visibility over Sedona today. Man, this looks awesome. Look at this. What the heck? Are you kidding me right now? This is gorgeous. Look at that area. Wow. Oh my god, I'm loving this one. Really loving this. Alright, uh, hold left or right for a quick view of the side mirrors. Oh, okay, there we go. So this is how you quickly look on the left or right side. Yeah, I'm actually loving it, especially this side. This is looking gorgeous. Uh, use left, right, up or down. Uh-huh, I get it. Alright. Uh, what if I go down here? Apparently you can look at all your controls, apparently. Use left, right, up and down to translate the camera inside. Aha, uh -huh. so this is how you control it. And we can also use the mouse in order to fly around fluidly. Save a custom camera by pressing Ctrl-Alt-1. Don't really want to do that. Get back to pilot view by pressing RS. Hmm. The instructor is currently flying the airplane. Yeah, I know. Uh, save a current camera. Let me go with Control alt one here, I guess, and uh, save a camera for ourselves. There we go. Get back to pilot view by pressing Alt-1. There we go. Oh, it's right there, right? That's the one. Can I please send the airplane a little bit because I think I see it. That's definitely the one right there. Hold X to focus on Sedona. There we go. I'm holding X. 
There you go. Visual confirmation on the airport. Huh. Now that we're oriented, it's your turn. Time to fly this bird. Oh god, is she gonna give me the controls the here? The control on our training list is the yoke. I still remember my first instructor saying... Oh my god, I'm actually... Like I got the controls right now. Almost. What the... Sure, you can turn, but you can also pitch. Wow. It controls the ailerons. Rolling the ailerons, out is too high, reduce it. Okay, okay. Move your gently to the right to roll your aircraft. Uh, nice. let's do that then. There we go. Now let's see you level back out. All right, let me level back out. I guess I'm gonna have to look at. Good. Oh God. Of course, what is happening? Why is the, the plane doing this? And the elevator affects the plane's pitch, right? I'm guessing this is where you gotta look well, in order to level mistake. out your plane, to climb. plane. Give it a shot. Gently pull back on the yoke to increase your pitch. Alright, so this is how you altitude. climb up, I guess. But notice when you're pitching up, your speed is decreasing. Yeah, I know. And if you I pitch down, I'm guessing power. I'm gonna get more speed. Or for now, you've left the training airspace, you no, no, no. go back. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I'm turning back. Hold up. Or for now, let's just pitch down. There we go. And let me pitch down a little bit to get a little bit of speed. Just like that. There we go. Up again as the nose down. <laughs> oh, I got as teleported back, back up in the uh, flying area, I guess. Yeah, the I must have left that beat. area. Man, this looks awesome, though. Look at the reflection in the Runner window on the left the side. That is crazy. Alright, use the rudder with LT and RT to skew your aircraft nose. Is this how you do it? Simple enough, right? Oh, there we go. Before Roll anger to on, high, reduce it. Alright. Make sure your dashboard is aligned three to four inches below the horizon for a cruise attitude. Uh, below or above the horizon. Use yoke okay, to straighten the, the aircraft. There we go. Straight. Full control over if the you got a need for speed. Let's see what happens when you cut all the power. Hmm. So use the throttle lever. Decrease throttle to cut engine power. How do I do that? I'm guessing I'm gonna have to use the mouse here. Oh, okay, so that's the throttle right there. This is this is the carburetor heat. So I'm gonna have to pull this one, right? Just like that? Surprise, surprise. Oh god. Our altitude is decreasing. The shake I got in the freaking controller is this crazy. Might be a good time for a piloting PSA. Hold up, I'm going down. Your surroundings because nobody likes a low flying duck. <laughs> All right. I guess. Go ahead and throw you left the training airspace. You oh my god. Back. I know. I know. Hold up. All right, I was just trying to do what you were telling me. Up. Let me throw it back up then. We we're definitely Going down by not having any throttle on the engine, that's for go. sure. Speed is increasing, and as All right, let me pull back up. The same attitude, our altitude will keep climbing too. There we go, there we go. And no, we we're back at it. Your controls. Yeah, I guess I am. Before long, you won't even need a co-pilot. <laughs> love it. You left the training airspace, you need to go back. What, what do you mean I love the training airspace? Where's Until the... Then, oh, I think it's on the left side. The radio or checklist. Oh, I guess uh, that was it. Oh my god, we are so low to these freaking houses right, right here. Look at this. This is awesome. Alright, let's uh, go with a second tutorial then. I'm pretty sure we are kind of done with this one. So let's just go ahead and go with Control Alt X. Alright, I have control. There we Jump. go. Alright, first tutorial has been complete. Let's go with the next one. 
next training menu. All right, there we go. Today we are back at the next flight. tutorial. Your plane is oriented relative to the horizon. If you look outside, you can see the cockpit is just about four inches below the horizon line. We're flying straight with a decent rate of speed. This is the crew's attitude. Let's see how it reads on your instruments. Hmm. To focus on instruments, press control one. All right. Take a look at the attitude indicator. As the name implies, it shows your current attitude. The white line is the horizon with the sky above and the ground below. That orange element in the middle aligned with the horizon, that's your plane. Just like we saw outside, our current attitude reads pretty much straight and level. Okay, now let's see how much power the engine's generating. Check your tachometer. My tachometer? Looks like we're what is that? Around 2300 revolutions per minute. Uh, where is it? Combined, attitude and engine RPMs translate to aircraft Oh, this is the one, I think. I didn't even know. Which leads us oh, there we go, this is the one. Indicator. Airspeed indicator. Now, last but not least, Check your altimeter. Uh, I'm guessing it's this one right altitude, here. You always want to read the small needle first. Mm. That's how many thousands of feet up you are. Then on to the big needle for the hundreds. All right, I get it. With our current attitude and power output, we're holding a speed of 90 knots and a stable altitude of 6,000 feet. But that's about to change. Take the stick when you're ready. Oh, wait, uh, how do I, how do I, how do I exit the screen? Return to normal view. Pull back there we go, there we go. On the yoke to raise the nose just above the horizon line. All right, About let me raise it up inches. a little bit. Two inches above it. Make sure you don't pitch up too much, or the angle will be too steep to create lift. Is this if good enough? enough lift, we'll stall. Yeah, I think this is good enough, I actually. All right. There we go. Full throttle and start climbing. Increased throttle then. Uh, let me see. The thing is, while playing with uh, the game here, we're actually using the mouse, keyboard, and controller as well. So we're definitely using a lot of stuff here. Aim aircraft nose above horizon. Um, like that? The climb attitude. There we go. See how it shows up on your attitude indicator and tachometer? Yep. I see we're going up. According to your altimeter, we're gaining altitude. Hmm. But we're losing airspeed even at full throttle, proving you can't avoid basic physics while making a climb. Yeah, eventually we are gonna stall, I guess, if we keep on doing okay, this. Before we go on, let's get back to a cruise attitude. Alright. Ease up on the yoke and aim your nose just below the horizon. Alright, I'm doing that. Back down to 2300 RPMs. 2300 RPMs? Um, I don't know how. Where is the throttle level? Let me see here. It should say RPM somewhere, right? I'm guessing this is the one. Airspeed. Hold up, I don't know exactly where it is. Ease up on the yoke and aim your nose just below the horizon. Then throttle back down to 2300 RPMs. I know, I don't know exactly where the RPMs are. That's uh, the issue that I'm having right now. Uh, let me also turn this around a little bit. Oh god, angle is too high. Alright, there we go, there we go, there we go. So, um... Just throw to 2300. Where Ease is it, though? Ease up on the yoke and aim your nose just below the horizon. Then throttle back down to 2300 RPMs. I keep saying that I left the airspace here, the training airspace. I don't know why, though. I know that I have to throw it down a little bit more. Nice job. Oh, there we go. set up with the same attitude and power we had at the top of our lesson. Huh. So this is at full throttle right now, so I don't get it. Descent attitude. Start by reducing your RPMs to 1800. Eighteen hundred. Further below the horizon. Is this eighteen hundred? Reduce throttle to eighteen hundred RPM. 
Or maybe not? I think we actually got some speed here, so this is not good. Let me go with As 31. There we the go. Nose down attitude. Our altitude is decreasing while our speed is picking up. Why don't you get us back to a cruise attitude and we'll hit the last part of our lesson. All right, increase the throttle to 23. So if uh, 18 is 31, then I'm going to have to increase this one to maybe 41. Or 65, something like that, I don't know. I mean, this seems to be a little bit too much, actually. And again, I don't know where the throttle meter is. That's why I'm, I'm a little bit confused here. Turn coordinates, clock. Uh, where's the throttle? There we go. Oh. Now that we know how to huh. cruise, climb, and descend, let's talk about the turn attitude. Gently pull the yoke left or right to start rolling the plane. There we go. If you take a look outside, you can see how our attitudes changed. But you can also check your instruments for the details. Interesting. As a general rule, you always want to keep your turns under 30 degrees. Under 30 degrees? At the top of your attitude indicator, there's a series of notches representing 10 degrees each. Use them to control your roll. Oh, I think it's just talking about this Notice right here. The more you turn, the more you need to pull back on the yoke to maintain altitude. When you're rolling out, you'll need to do the opposite. Roll and push at the same time. The more you know about the main attitudes of flight, the closer you get to that pilot state of mind. So keep practicing, and whenever you're done, pass me the controls. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I'm doing a really, really good job at this here, but at least... I'm doing what she's saying. <laughs> I do think that sometimes I am rolling a little bit too high, as you can see here, that's for sure. So, uh, yeah, I think we are done with this one right here. I think we should be good for now. So let me just pass down the controls again and uh, keep on at it. All right, so I'm guessing this one is going to be all about taking off, which is most definitely not going to be that easy. All right, there we go. So we are landed. Like, a mile of road will take you a mile. A mile of runway will take you anywhere. <laughs> huh. Taking off isn't hard, but there are a few key points to remember. First, we always take off into the wind, which won't be an issue on a calm day like today. Second, before we enter a runway, we always make sure it's clear. All right, so let's disengage the brakes here, I guess. I mean, I see that it's clear. I don't see anything. Uh, focus on the runway. I mean, I am focused on that. What the heck? Everything looks good. No cross traffic. <laughs> go ahead and taxi into position. All right, let's go. The rudder pedals should make steering the plane pretty easy. How do you do that? Uh, to do, do, do a line aircraft on the center of the runway. Stop aircraft. I don't know how to. Oh, I think you use, or maybe not. Okay, okay, so what you gotta do here is actually put it in throttle in order to make it work. I get it. Oh, hold up, hold up. Too much throttle, too much throttle, too much throttle. No, no, no. That is too much. No! <laughs> what did I do? Crap, I messed up, that's for sure. Uh, let's just restart this because we are gonna run into the fence. To the aircraft, use LT and RT. Oh, there we go. Pretty easy. Oh yeah, pretty, pretty easy, that's for sure. Alright, let me just steer this up a little bit here. And I think we should be good to go. Let me pull on this so that we don't have any more throttle and apply the brakes. Alright, let's do this. There apply we go. Full power and I'll walk you through the takeoff as we go. Oh god. Alright, let's do this then. Hopefully we can easily take off here. Apparently she also wants me to apply full power. She's gonna be a little bit crazy. Use your rudders to stay on the center line and keep pushing power until you reach 55 knots. 55 knots. Let's see here. Good. Now gently pull back on the yoke. Oh, already? Line up the top of your instrument panel so it's a couple inches above the horizon. 
That'll pitch us up and set a good climb attitude. All right, there we go. Oh, no way, we are off the sky. Are you serious and right now? No way. Use your rudders to keep the runway heading of Look at this. Maintain seventy-five That's crazy. knots, and we'll reach our target altitude of fifty-five hundred feet in no time. All right, let's keep going then. Let's uh, climb the altitude. I think I'm just gonna hold it on like this. I see that the altitude is definitely increasing, and that's definitely what we want. I see that we also have some airspeed, which is great. It's not going down, although the altitude is going up, which is great. And I think we have to reach about 55. Uh, you know what? I think I need to decrease the flaps. Yeah, just like that. Or maybe nope. Never mind. Let's put him back up. Do I have to lower those things? I don't even know. Yeah, I see that my air time is actually going up. So I may need to put that thing back again. And what I'm talking about is this thing right here. The flap switch. They're at 0% right now. So we uh, definitely don't need them. There we nice go. Safe altitude for part two of our lesson. We got it. Straight and level flight. First step here is adjusting our attitude. Alright, I mean, our altitude is at... It's still increasing, actually. I think Even I need to... There we go. Pushing max power. To stay level at our target altitude, let's start by easing the throttle back to 1800 RPMs. Alright, 1800. Altitude, you need to pitch the nose up. You could just keep pulling on the yoke to hold steady, but that's not really a precise means of control. Huh. Probably better to adjust your trim wheel until you don't need to push or pull on the yoke. Drag like the trim, trim down wheel. when you need to set the nose up. Drag what it is up that? to set the nose down. Try adding trim to keep us at 5500 feet without increasing throttle. If you feel our pitch slipping and need to get back to the proper attitude, don't worry. Just pull on the yoke, then dial in the right trim. Wait up, I don't I don't understand what she's talking about. What's a trim? Um So we still need to maintain the RPM at eighteen hundred. The problem is I need to add this trim, which is Y plus up or Y plus down. I don't know, let's go with Y plus up. Oh, there we go. The way I was taught, when you adjust the trim, you make rough changes at first to remove pressure on the yoke. Wow. Then small adjustments to find the perfect setting to keep your desired attitude. That's the key to straight and level flight. It saves you from constantly pushing or pulling on the yoke. And that gives you more time to enjoy the ride. Hold if up, my camera changed here. Using the trim, go for it. Whenever you're ready to pass the no. controls, I'll be here. My first instructor used to say, the best part of flying is landing in one piece. The man was a terminal pessimist, but he wasn't wrong. Today, you're in charge of bringing us in for a safe landing. Oh my we've god, this is not gonna be easy. Approach, so we don't have to complete the standard traffic pattern. And I've already set us up in landing configuration. At 65 knots, with 10 degrees of flaps and idle power. We're on the glide slope now. Maintain speed around 65 knots. Change your pitch if you need to, and keep your aim point on the runway number. When you're targeting the runway number, you want to keep it steady in your sights. If it looks like the number's moving up in your windscreen, you're coming in low. You'll need to add a bit more throttle to get back on the slope. If it looks like the number's moving down in your windscreen, well, then you're too high. You'll need to add flaps to increase your rate of descent, but you'll also need to push forward and trim to change your attitude and maintain the same speed. All right, to extend flaps for landing, press F8. Uh, F8. Aha. Uh -huh. All right, so I'm guessing I now have the... Wheels ready for landing. Align with runway and maintain 65 knots. Uh, how many knots do I have? I mean... 
We're definitely not having 65. I think I need to give myself a little bit more here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Align with the airway. Keep your aim point on the runway threshold. When you're 10 feet above the runway, it's time to flare. It's time to flare? What? Shift your aim point to the end of the runway. Then, pull back slightly on the yoke to aim the nose just above it. Hold up. I don't really understand what she's... I mean, from what she said, I think I barely understood about 30% or something like that. <laughs> I definitely didn't understand enough. Oh my god, I think I'm going way too low here. We're past the threshold, but still a bit high. I know. Keep reducing altitude. Crap. <laughs> Alright, I think... Hold up. I think we do need to... Oh god. That was bad. <laughs> I do feel like we need to aim the other end of the runway here. Because we're really not facing. Uh, we're not really coming in perfectly. So we I don't think... the threshold, think... but yeah. still a bit yeah. high. Keep reducing altitude. You should be able to start flaring the plane now. I don't understand what flaring means, but... Keep pulling back slowly. Let the plane there we go, there we go. Don't push it down, oh my god. Don't let it start climbing. Are you kidding me right now? Did we just... Nice. Did we just land now a plane? Apply the brakes to slow oh us my god. Bring the plane to a stop. No, no. Uh, remove the throttle completely. There we go. And apply the brakes. Wow. I cannot believe I actually landed the plane from the cockpit. Great job. As they say, <laughs> any landing you can walk away from is a good landing. But if what you can the heck? the plane the next day... It's outstanding. Landings can be hard, even for seasoned pilots. Trust me, don't hesitate to practice. After all, that's what we're here for, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, I cannot say that I've done it in the first try, but I gotta tell you, I actually understood about 20% from what she said. I got no clue what uh, what she was talking about there, but uh, we landed it. Alright, there we go. On this one, I think Let's we are gonna have to take no off and land again. Unless you're a pilot training on traffic patterns. Sedona's standard traffic pattern follows a 1,000 foot altitude around the main runway. By the time we're Alright, let me here, take out the brakes. You'll know how to complete the full run from takeoff to landing. So let's get started. Alright, full throttle. Let's take off. Oh, hold up, I think the brakes are on. <laughs> oh no, the brakes are on now. Never mind. <laughs> I kind of messed up there, but that's okay. Alright, so now we know how to take off. It's pretty easy to take off, that's for sure. Uh, let me see how this goes. And once we reach a speed of at least... 50 knots, I think, or 60, that's when we can... Start pulling up, or maybe now? Yeah, there we go. We are off. Perfect. And let's keep going up. When we're up... Keep us aligned with the runway and climb to 5,400 feet. We're going for a left-hand traffic pattern. Alrighty then. We are going to have to follow the traffic pattern on this area, I guess. And we are going to have to climb all the way to 5,000 feet. So let's keep climbing here as much as possible. Come on, buddy. Man, I cannot wait to start flying one of those big aircrafts, though. I have a feeling those are not going to be easy to do. Those those will definitely have some different rules and stuff like that. Just because how big they are. Once we reach altitude, you're going to start turning left 90 degrees toward a 122 degree heading. Okay, All right. we're in the pattern. Get ready to enter the crosswind section. Good. Keep going till you reach the traffic pattern altitude of 5,700 feet. Ready to make your left turn downwind? When the runway I'm already turning. the halfway point of your wing strut, you'll know you're at a good glide distance. Aha, uh -huh, I get it. So we are going to have to be straight with the uh, runway, I guess. And also, I do feel like I need to climb up a little bit more. To about 50 something feet. So we let me keep on climbing. There we the go. Track. Look at that. We got it. Easy. Lower your nose to a cruise attitude and reduce power to 2100 RPMs. 
2100. Uh, hold up, hold up. speed is in the white arc. Add 10 degrees of flaps to prep us for landing. Now's not a bad time to check if the runway is looking good. All right, hold up, hold and up. It probably goes without saying. Always watch out for other planes entering or exiting the pattern. I mean, I really don't see no planes on the runway, so I think we are good to land here. We're gonna if I'm not mistaken. We're gonna the end of the runway here. Keep going until you see it at a 45 degree angle behind you. Aha! Uh -huh, so I'm That's guessing somewhere around there. Left again, onto the base leg. I get it. I get it. Makes sense. Let's just keep on going up here then. The problem is, I think we need to have a little bit of throttle because we are losing airtime here. Uh, hold up. Oh, okay, never mind. We don't have to throttle because we are at the perfect altitude right now. Alright, there we go, and we're back. Now, let me just decrease the throttle here to about 50, I guess. Yeah, I guess that's gonna be okay. And once we get here, we are gonna have to just roll and um, make sure we kind of land it. Now, let me just make sure we don't have too much altitude here. Just have to have a bar right. Also, let's make sure we don't lose the airspeed because that's what caused us to fail. Uh, let me just reduce this one to about 44, just like that. All right, reduce there we go. power to idle to start losing altitude and maintain cruise attitude. Keep an eye on the runway as we get ready for our final turn. That'll also keep our speed around 65 knots. 65 knots? All right. I get it, boss. Let me keep on turning this because we have to align with the airport here. Hold up. I think I'm going to have to pull this out completely here. We don't need any more throttle right now. There we go. The runway's in full view. There we go. Make sure to keep the plane centered on approach. No, no. If you're too high, add flaps. Too low, add power to maintain the glide path. No, no, let me try to turn it a little bit. Oh my god, this is not going to be easy. This is not going to be an easy landing. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We got flaps, we got everything we need. Let's try to land it and try to keep it a little bit higher. Please do not be too hard. Do not be too hard. Oh god, that was quite of a rough landing, but oh my god, we've done it. That is not easy. Man. Way to stick the landing. Now, just apply the brakes <laughs> to slow your roll. And make sure you don't stop on the runway, of course. All right. Uh, if other planes yeah, are I looking think I'm going to have to get off to here. Move. Take one of the taxiways on the right. I know. I know. I'm trying. I'm trying to. Although the brakes are on, I think. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right, I think this is good. I think we're actually getting off here. Good job. As an old instructor <laughs> said to me, not only did you not die, you're really learning to fly. I mean, that was kind of a rookie move there, but hey, look at that. We've done it. We have actually done it. And our next train is going to be the last one, I think. It's going to be the one where we're going to have to uh, take off, fly solo, and land without any instructions. So uh, let's go ahead and do it. All right, there we go. It's time. Your first solo flight. I'll be watching from the ground in radio contact if you need me, but something tells me you won't. Your goal is to complete Sedona's left-hand traffic pattern on your own. Remember what we covered in our previous sessions, and you'll be just fine. Good luck. See you on the other side. <laughs> Alright, thank you very much. I'm definitely gonna need it. Hopefully we can do this one and uh, not crash again. But, I mean, I'm pretty sure I kind of know what I gotta do don't really need any instructions anymore because I kind of know how to fly the plane now which sounds pretty insane I never thought I'm gonna be able to ever fly a plane but this is not easy I gotta tell you all right there we go there we go I think we are off the ground if I'm not mistaken come on buddy we're getting altitude perfect There we go. Alright, so we gotta reach 54,000, as usual. 
and then we're gonna have to start turning around. Let me just keep the plane level like that and look behind me. Look at this. We taken off. That's crazy. Now let me try to keep the altitude here and try to increase it to about fifty-four thousand. And also try not to lose any airtime on either. Just because it's not gonna be a good idea to lose any airtime. Come on. Alright, I think we got 3,000 feet. Perfect. I think we are at about 4,000 feet. And just a few more feet. There we go, I think we're good. Alright, let's start turning this thing. Let's start turning around and coming in for the landing. Just make some really, really easy turns here. No reason to... No reason to make them too much. Oh god. Alright, there we go. I think we're good. We're at 6,000 feet right now, and I think that it's a little bit too much. So let me try to get that down a little bit. I do see the runway right up here, so I think we should be good on this side. If we go straight, just like that, we should actually be good. Look at this. Easy. It's really easy. Love it. Alright, let's keep at it. Uh, let me make sure there's nothing in the runway. Yeah, I mean, the runway looks pretty... Pretty empty right now, so we should be clear to land. Turn left for final approach. Yeah, I knew it. Also, let me turn off this thing a little bit. We got way too much speed right now. And I think we still have a little bit too much speed as well. Let me turn it off a little bit more, like 44. 44 RPM should be enough. Alright, so the runway is on our left side right up here. Let's try to slow down a little bit as well. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We should be good. We should be good like this. Uh, let me try to get this one to about 32. I know this is not going to be the smoothest, smoothest landing, but... I'm not a pilot, guys. I am not a pilot. <laughs> I'm still learning. Alright, let me just lower down the flaps a little bit here. Uh, hold up. Did I... There we go. I think I just got the wheels out right now. Completely forgot about them. Uh, let me try to get this thing all the way to... There we go. I think we should be good. Keep it smooth, keep it smooth and keep it on the landing. Oh god. There we go. We got it. Man, our second landing. <laughs> I've always said flying is freeing. Open skies, endless possibilities. But to fully enjoy it, you need to be prepared. We're going to focus this lesson on navigation prep and procedures. The fundamentals of getting from point A to point B. Step one, putting some distance between us and the ground. Oh wow, hold up. I think this is gonna be our first mission here where we gotta go from point A to point B. And uh, I see that we have some sort of a timer here, or at least this is maybe personal, just so that we can see how fast we can get to that location. So first of all, let's get the... Let's get the brakes off, and let's get going. Let's just take off. This is the easiest part so far. We've already done this one way, so, way too many times. So let me just start up the timer here. And see how fast we can get to the, our destination. Oh, one last bit of departure prep. We need to validate the time. That's a fancy way of saying start the clock. All right, there we go. We started up the clock, and now we gotta go to Moon's Park. Apparently, interesting. 
Alright, let me get this one straight up to go that way, on that direction. And just fly straight up to it, I guess. Now, what I still don't understand is how to get the plane to be leveled itself so that I don't have to pull on the stick anymore. That's one part that I never, never managed to understand. I don't understand why, though. Because I tried all the techniques here, but it just doesn't want to listen. So let me try it one more time here. Let me go at around... Uh, maybe 6,000 feet, something like that. Try to keep it at that. And then activate it. Is it going to get activated or not? Oh, I think it did! Look at that! Yeah, I think it actually worked. There we go, I think we got it, finally. There we go, I think we just activated it. Well, I don't really know exactly how I did it, but... I did it! That's all I need. Now, we're definitely going a little bit way too high here. I think, I don't know. Alright, I think I know. So if you press this button here... There we go. We can actually see the plane from outside now. What? No way. This is so beautiful. Wow. If we press it again, we go back inside. Well, what more do you want? That is perfect. That's all I needed. Man, but flying from this perspective is definitely going to be awesome. Uh, I think I'm going to have to learn how to remove the... HUD though, and just have the plane showing up, nothing else. Hmm. So this is just gonna show it flying like this, this is gonna show it flying from the direction. Whoa, look at those canyons though, what? That is really cool. And I think this sun is also going down a little bit right now, or it may actually be covered by the clouds, that's why it's so dark. get it. Alright, so now we have the Flagstaff. Uh, six minutes to get here. Hold up, what am I supposed to look at? Start Navlock Stopwatch. Um, okay, I guess I'm gonna have to On start this again. Log, you can see our next waypoint, Munns Park. Is it a 41 degree heading about five minutes away? Oh, I get it. Flying a given heading for a given amount of time. Sometimes you deviate, but if you track the time flown from your last known position, you'll always have at least a range for your current position. Alright, that makes sense. I was getting a little bit confused there because I had no idea what I was doing. Um, we all know speed can increase or now it works. depending on the wind. That's why at your next waypoint you'll want to compare your estimated time and route with the actual time flown. Validate your estimate and your progress. I mean, I'm not trying to beat any type of score here or anything, so I'm not quite sure what she's trying to tell me here. But, man, just look at this. What the heck? This looks awesome. This is really, really cool right now. Uh, hold up, let me try to aim my plane properly get to the destination just like that all right there we go now I was looking in the menu for a second here I wanted to make sure there is an option to remove the HUD oh there we go so if you hold down actually no never mind the HUD is just simply gonna show up eventually it's just taking a little bit of time to load in I guess look at that how beautiful is this? They put a lot of work in making this game gorgeous, that's for sure. Just look at this thing. I 
Especially now that the sun is uh, shining on top of us. It's definitely making it look even better. Alright, so I do see the airport right here. Restart Nevlog to stop watch. Haven't I restarted it? I think I did. I've also closed it down, so I'm not gonna be able to do this anymore. Um, hmm. Am I gonna have to land the other way around, or... Yeah, I don't know exactly which way you land on this one. Alright, we got 3,000 feet altitude. 4,000 feet about. Let me also decrease the speed here a little bit. And try to go in for a smooth landing. Alright, boys, I hope you're ready for our third landing here. Just uh, sit back. Relax, and hopefully this one's gonna be a really smooth one. Let me lower it down a little bit more. There we go. Just like that. Now let me also lower down this thing a little bit. Ah, oh, this is easy. If only it would be this easy in real life. <laughs> I mean, this one is still telling me to restart the nav log, which I've already done. But uh, since I don't have that menu anymore, and I don't know how to grab it, I'm not going to even worry about this. Alright, flops down. Flaps down a little bit more so that we can slow down the plane some more. Man, look at this. So good. And of course, I am going to land it from this perspective again. Just because I feel like this is the way to go. If you are managing to land a plane in this perspective, you are a pro. Landing the plane in third person, that's just way too easy. Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> there we go. We got it. Hmm. You weren't really supposed to land there. Wait, what? It's well done. Don't get me wrong. Just not what was expected. <laughs> At this point, I think it's probably best if we start the lesson over. No. God dang it. What do you mean I failed? Are you serious right now? Alright, well, you know what, guys? I think uh, we are actually going to have to end it up here. Now, I don't exactly know what she really wanted me to do there. I, I think she actually wanted me to come back to Sedona and land the plane back up here. We only had to maybe visit that place and not really land it there. But, uh, you know what? I'm gonna call that a success, even if we failed it. That was way, way too good. And I really loved our flight there. That was really good. Alright, right. well, you know what, guys? I think uh, this is gonna be the end of this one right here for now. And uh, if you guys want me to keep on flying from more destinations and keep on exploring the world here, please let me know down in the comments below. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. And if you guys are new here and have subscribed yet, do consider doing that. As I'm planning to post more awesome videos in the future. Alright everybody, stay safe out there and I'll see you all in the next flight. Bye!